welcome to We Need Day by Day with Pastor Ralph LaRosa. Today, we will continue with our series, The Church in These Last Days. Pastor will proceed with the essentials of the faith. He will continue with eight statements of faith with a topic, What We Believe About the Holy Spirit. So we're studying eight statements of faith, what we believe as a local church in our basic series for 2021. And we've talked about the Bible, about God, about Jesus Christ. And this morning, we're going to talk about God, the Holy Spirit. Uh, We give this number two every week. We don't say much about it, the church in these last days. But let me just apply the Holy Spirit to these last days in one verse. If you look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it tells us, and this is really important, this is unique to the church age in Christ, it's true of every true believer, no one gets in the body of Christ without this. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. And this is unique since the day of Pentecost, since the beginning of the church age, just about 2,000 years ago. And whether we're Jews or Gentiles, in this dispensation, we are part We are a part of the body of Christ. And what is important about that, we have a statement, uh, because the Israel still has a future. We're going to be snatched out of here in the rapture, as we talked about in the previous lesson. So let's look at uh, Christ is building his church via a body, formed by the Holy Spirit, and that's our subject today. We really want to understand the Holy Spirit. So notice Colossians 1.18, and again, remember, this body that we're going to talk about is being formed by the Holy Spirit. Colossians 1.18, and he, Christ, is the head of the body, and what is the body we're talking about? The church. Okay, it's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. We're physical, and we'll have a physical resurrection body in the future, but it's a spiritual kingdom at this moment. Okay, it's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, and it's a body, and we are in what we call the church age. Listen to Colossians 1.24. Paul, and he's the one that really helped us to understand this. God used him. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. Our sufferings now are very temporary. In the afflictions of Christ, just because we represent him, for the sake of his body. And what is his body? It's the church. And how do you get into this body? By the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and what's the big deal about that? When this body is complete, remember I'm talking about the church in these last days. And the body of Christ is called the church. This is the universal church. Okay? This is invisible as far as all of the believers that are a part of it, except for the ones that are in our local geographical location. When the body of Christ is complete, it will be complete when the full number of the Gentiles have come in. Remember there was the age of Israel and the focus was on the Jews and the focus was on Israel and the focus was on Jerusalem and that's still a focus in the future but right now the focus is on Jews and Gentiles in one body called the church and that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So let's give a definition of what we want to cover today and part of it about the Holy Spirit. Uh, The Holy Spirit is not just a force or an influence, but he is a power path. He's an eternal power path. Let's look at it. As we have said for the Father and also for the Son, God has eternally existed in three personalities, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is co-equal and co-eternal with the Father, and with the Son of God. Although, and notice I capitalize He, because He's a person, although He is a spirit, He is a personality, and not just a 
force, you know, like the force, uh, Star Wars or something. No, he's a person. Uh, or he's not just a power or an influence. He is a person with consciousness, with the ability to choose, with the ability to have, to think, okay? So he's a person. He's God, the Holy Spirit. And even though we called him the Energizer in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, when he covered the waters and he energized it, he's still a person. He's all-powerful, he's everywhere, he's, he's omnipresent, but yet he is a person, very clear in the Word of God. When it says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, that's Christ, and the Word was with God, that's talking about the Father and the Spirit, Elohim. Let us make man in our image. Okay? Let's look at the mission of the Holy Spirit in this world. The Holy Spirit is present in the world to make people aware of their need for Jesus Christ. He does this through the convict... Listen carefully now, this is really important. Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead in a physical body. He's the God-man and he ascended back to heaven. And now the only way we can move go to heaven is to have a relationship with the Father through him. Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. And how does this happen? He does this through convicting people of three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And this is very important how he does this. How does he do this? And this is a really important thing for all of us as believers, as followers of Christ. The Holy Spirit empowers followers of Christ to be his witnesses. He empowers us so we can be a witness to other people so that they will understand they have sinned against God, that they do not, they're not good enough on their own to get to heaven. We have to have perfect righteousness, which is his righteousness. And if we reject that, we will face the judgment of God. Okay? So listen to John 16, 7. This is what Jesus said the night before he was crucified. The helper, and we're going to find out later on, that's uh, another name for the encourager. Actually, it comes from the, the Greek word parakletos, parakletos, or parakaleo. And it means the helper, the encourager. Okay? He, he is the one that illuminates us. So he's also a consoler. He's also a comforter. Okay? So the helper, and that's the title of the Holy Spirit, I will send to you. Now he was already there, but he, now he does a unique ministry in the church age. Verse 8. And when he comes, this is one of his ministries, he will convict the world Concerning sin, that's what he had to do with the Apostle Paul when he used to be Saul and when he was in on the martyrdom of Stephen and the Holy Spirit convicted him that this was murder, it was wrong, it was sinful, he was a coveter, he was jealous of this guy and even though he had self-righteousness, he didn't have God's righteousness and if he didn't repent and change his mind and trust in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, he would face the same judgment of hell, the same lake of fire as the devil and his angels. So let's look at some of the things the Holy Spirit convinces the unbeliever about Jesus Christ. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus Christ had to make one of the greatest decisions that he ever made in his whole life. He, he was under extreme pressure. He sweat drops of blood. He was betrayed by one of his own followers, Judas. He was arrested and he was an innocent man by this mob that arrested him. He was denied by his closest friend, the Apostle Peter, which was not an apostle yet, but he became one. He was tried unfairly. He's the only perfect man that ever lived. He was tortured beyond recognition uh, and crucified on the cross, and yet he fulfilled exactly what he predicted. 
He resurrected from the dead. And that's the most documented event in ancient history. Thank you for listening to Renewed Day by Day with Pastor Ralph LaRosa. Tomorrow, he will continue with the church in these last days and our eight statements of faith. Until then, God bless you and stay healthy.